you're going to need both because they do separate things. And there's new technology out there every day, new types of devices. Do your research and be diligent on it. And if you need help, that's kind of what we're here for at Eco, to be able to help you select the right types of devices to help protect your circuit and your facility. Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. All right, welcome to this episode of Eco SY. Today, we're going to be digging into a topic of, of short circuit and overload protection. What's the difference and why does it matter? So, Joining us today, we have our Automation and Power Product Manager, Mr. Jonathan Fuller, with us from South Carolina. So, Jonathan, just to kick us off, what's the main difference in short circuit and overload protection? Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. So, um, you know, one of the biggest differences between the two is an overload is going to be long durations of overcurrent on a device, whereas short circuit is going to be that quick high hit of overcurrent that can cause some major issues in your device. Okay, very good. So, Jonathan, when I think of short circuit and overload protection, I, I go back to my experience working in the repair days, and I can't even take this to a mechanical failure. It's not just electrical, where uh, a good friend of mine, Mr. Mark Latino, taught me the difference of a brittle failure. So, let's talk a little bit deeper here. Why should the end users care and understand the differences between the two protection schemes? Yeah, so I mean, they're going to provide different protections for different areas of their scheme. So the short circuit protection, that's going to be usually in the means of circuit breaker or fuse, and that's going to be upstream of that overload and motor. So that's going to protect your wire and and your motor and your overload from those high, huge inrush currents, um, really quick hits. But the overload device is there to protect the motor. Uh, and the wiring between the overload and the motor. So the overload is not really going to pick up those inrush currents or not going to care about the inrush current. It's more there for over time as that motor has too much load on it. It's going to be there to shut that down so that you don't damage your motor with things like heat and cause issues in the motor with that overload protection. So they're really, they're two different things, but you need both in that circuit. And just for the listeners out there, because your, your motor tripped on overload, does not necessarily mean that you need to go crank your overload up some, right, Jonathan? Right. So, I mean, those overloads, they've got different classes in there for different types, class 5, 10, 20, different types of trip curves and things like that. And a lot of them are going to have that built-in reset so that if you do trip out that motor, that motor tripped for a reason. Most times we're just want to go back and hit that reset and get up and running as quickly as we can. Um, But that actually can cause a lot of damage to that motor because of the heat in that motor and can cause issues with your bearings and things like that. So they're going to have that built in reset so that you can't just go slam that reset button and get up and run. You're going to have to wait a little bit for that motor to cool down. Very good. Very good. So let's think about common mistakes. I mean, we're here to help people, to help industry out there. What are some of the common mistakes you hear about from end users in, in regards to short circuit or overload protection? Well, you know, Chris, you brought up a great point just a minute ago that if, if my motor's out there tripping, let me just go increase the, uh, the overload or the short circuit protection on it. That's not always a smart idea. In fact, it's usually never a smart idea because it's tripping for a reason and it was designed to do what it's doing. So if you go and increase that amperage, you could potentially cause a, a safety issue and things could catch on fire or you could have an, an event at your facility and that's not ever something that you want to deal with. And also, you know, a lot of times people do the same with short circuit protection, like a breaker, you know, if my breaker is tripping, can't tell you the amount of times I've heard people say, yeah, well, just pull that 20 amp breaker out and put a 30 amp in and that'll fix it. Chances are, if you do that, a lot of your devices that that circuit breaker is protecting or the wire that it's protecting, they're not rated for that higher current. So while your breaker's not tripping and hey, that's great for you, it could cause your wire to melt or it could cause, you know, a fire in your facility. So you really need to be careful about sizing a short circuit in your overload protection for the job at hand. That's a great point. Safety is always a key element of what we talk about on Eco SY. So that's a great tie back, Jonathan, that you did there from that sizing standpoint, because you're right. These, the, the conductors, the cables that are out there that are run to the equipment, 
are designed for those ratings. And it's, if you exceed that, you could be opening yourself up to uh, potential problems. So let's talk a little bit more here on this topic. What do you see as an area where people potentially are cutting corners that could be impacting them in the future when it comes to short circuit and overload protection? Yeah, a lot of times I see people just not really use overload protection. They might just use their short circuit and then their um, their device, like their drive or their starter, uh, without overload to try and save some money or undersize the device. Or if the device breaks, their overload or their short circuit protection breaks, they might just not replace it and bypass it to get out there and keep running. But there's several different types of overload relays and, and things out there like that, and they've all got their different pros and cons. A lot of times facilities are, are running on the cheapest possible protection that they can just so that they can get by and, and make a dollar. So is price one of the main resistant points that our end users are facing right now? Because they're trying to, obviously, we're trying to, to keep costs down in a plant. Do you see that as, as one of the primary areas of resistance? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's got a budget. Everybody has a target they've got to hit. So when you go into a facility and say, hey, Mr. Customer, here's some new technology and things that are safer and, and better. You know, a lot of times they're like, how much does it cost? And and when you start talking about things like that, they're like, yeah, no, I, I can't do that. My budget and I'm getting fine just by on what I'm doing now, be it might be something that they've had to bypass or something that's not safe and doing what they need it to do, but it's working for them now. So they're not wanting to spend that money and that budget to try and upgrade to something that's better and safer. Absolutely. How about applications so far as uh, resistance that end users are seeing? Do you see any of that out there? Yeah, sometimes, you know, as technology changes and things like that, what they might have been doing a couple of years ago is now there's better ways out there to do it. But again, it comes back to it's been working for 10 years and that device might not have a 10 year to life history. So why change it now? You know, I'll worry about it when it breaks. A lot of times people aren't wanting to change anything unless it's broken. What about the ability to learn from things that failed right in the plant? So is there a way that we could look at failed components? and maybe evaluate new ways or new technology out there to give us a better protection in the future? Yeah, that's one of the best ways that people learn about things is the failures that, that have happened. We can go in there and look at your current protection scheme and how you've got things set up and you learn from that. If it didn't work, why didn't it work? And what can we do to make it better? And use some of that newer technology or things out there to help them get a, a better setup to help them in the future. Absolutely. Good advice. But just, just in closing and wrapping up, do you have any advice or takeaways that you would that would you offer up to our end users so they can remember that would be impactful for them when it comes to short circuit and overload protection? Yeah, there, there is a difference between the two. And a good protective circuit is going to have both in it. You're going to have a short circuit, a protection and a breaker or a fuse upstream and then you're going to have your overload protection downstream uh, where your starter and motor are you're going to need both because they do separate things and there's new technology out there every day new types of devices do your research and be diligent on it and if you need help that's kind of what we're here for at eco to be able to help you select the right types of devices to help protect your circuit and your facility Absolutely. Great point. We are here to help. Eco asks why we're digging into these topics to help our listeners raise their education in some of these topics, as well as just being able to hear some of the experts like yourself, Jonathan, speak on it. So thank you so much for your time, for your knowledge today, and for everything that you share with our listeners. Yeah, absolutely. I, thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com. 